Hello, and welcome to We Are Live. I'm trying different opens, guys, okay? It's the first week. I'm just rolling out different things. Give me a break. We are live. We are live. We are live. Anyone like any one of those? No? Tech Electronics, who uh, helped us build this studio out, is cringing uh, mm. that their wonderful, wonderful machinery Technology is being abused in such a manner. My name is Chris Denman. The show is We Are Live. We're a podcast, but we also stream live on Facebook, 8 to 10 a.m. every day. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. If you're watching live at home, you see my beautiful face. You see the wonderful Bree Weaver. How are you, Bree? Good day, mate. Oh, my is that God. Doing? Yes. Accents, different mm, opens. We are. We're trying different things. This is what this first week is about. Not really feeling any of your uh, hijinks. <laughs> Try it, Chris. Come on. Give us an accent, Chris. Come on. Say something really funny in a fun accent. What's up, y'all? What, what, was, what was that? You like to suck the spit through the teeth yeah, thing? Yeah, what was that? It's a what? gangster thing. Oh, it's... Mm-hmm. Mm. I didn't say gangsta. Okay. Yeah, I could have been my own type of guy there. Mm. Uh, MAGA supporter, recent Wait. MAGA ah. supporter, ah. Chris Gardner is the producer and video production expert. I will not play your games and fall for your trap in Black History Month, Travis, of trying to trick me into some sort of cultural appropriation. No, not at all, Gardner. You try. Try it out, Gardner. <laughs> no. Come on, give us one. Absolutely just not. Try a little, just come on, little Taze. You Absolutely come on, not. Give, you were doing your little no. brother the other day. No, no, come no. on, do a little Travis no. impersonation. Just a little one. No, no. Come on, no. you can do it. Just try it one time. All right. No. Oh, all right. What you into? There it is. <laughs> it's pretty good, actually. That's when you talk to a black person on the phone. <laughs> Carter. When you answer when I call, oh, good morning, sir. It's yes. really impressive how you turn that on and off. What do you call that? Yeah. Code it, switching? It is called code switching. You just never know. And I always fear mm. that Gardner has me on speakerphone and there are other whites around. So I know it's like, I got to Why? Be because they'd be cues. pleasantly that, surprised. Like, well, he sounds like a nice gentleman. That's the I idea. Think that makes you racist. Uh, to change. Well, How you, you don't speak to somebody on the phone based on their race. Well, it sounds like you're not very confident in yourself. It's far from it. I believe that society has created these norms where you have to behave a particular way Ooh. around a certain group of white people. So because well, no, the white people society. not conform. It's called surviving. I think, I think. It's a survival <laughs> technique in order for me to get from point A to point B. There are certain things that I have to do, and this is what I have to so, do. Why, Travis? Be confident. I'll tell you this. Okay. You're a good one. Wait, what? Hey. <laughs> Hey! Why is it that point A to B takes you 17 minutes longer on average than I? <laughs> because I have to go through at least 10 cop cars to get there. That's fair. Good answer. So, Quick answer. So. Uh, on the show today, you can text in, be part of the fun. 314-669-1431. The way phones work, you can text in from anywhere. That's right. International charges may apply no, we for our listeners in Azerbaijan. No, we ain't for that shit. I'm fine. Uh, today, Travis just, I feel like he makes a point. He goes, I'm going to cuss. Yep. He does. Absolutely. It's he does. First, how often We're, do people get to cuss? You're not a gentleman. Four minutes in. Right. How many people get the opportunity to cuss at 8.04 in the morning? Uh, a lot of folks. Every try truck to driver in America. That's right. a good point. Uh, Jim Brewer. You know him from Saturday Night Live. You know him uh, from the movie... Half baked. Half you didn't baked. have to look at me Half when you baked. asked me what. Man, come on, yep. everyone knows that movie. Jim Brewer, just potheads. <laughs> uh, calling in today. He's on tour with Metallica, and he is at Helium Comedy Club this weekend. Uh, Wait, he opens for Metallica. It's it's almost like he's part of the show. You'll hear about it, but uh, it's interesting. And he kind of called his own shot. So. Tune in for that. We'll okay. uh, we'll have cool. that interview at the be the end of this hour. The great Jeff Jones back from Jupiter, Florida. He is now officially from Scoops from DannyMac.com. That's Dan McLaughlin, who has the best job in the world as the play-by-play mm, -play man for the St. Louis Cardinals. And he's had it for man since we were certainly in high school. Yeah, he is. He's uh, he's fantastic. So congrats to Jeff on that. We'll have Jeff live and in studio. Correct, Gardner. We've got Jeff in studio. Lots to get to today. We'll have your fair or foul in a second. Gardner, if you have a melee, we could get that. Are we going melee list today? That's what that empty thing on the rundown is all about. Correct. <laughs> yep. You see how the sausage is made with the no cameras boy. here, people. Uh, <laughs> fair or foul today. What do we have, Gardner? And I'll, uh, I'll give you a prize for it, too. Well, for fair or foul, I read this story yesterday. And with it being Black History Month, it caught my eye. Okay. 
Papa John's is adding a uh, new menu item. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So during Black History Month, they decided to add a menu. I'm sure it's something uh, that people around the world can galvanize behind, something that truly interests pizza lovers everywhere. Do you know about this? I have a general idea as to where this <laughs> could be going. It's a chicken and waffle pizza. Mm. Don't, don't hit me. Papa why, John's why wouldn't releasing you just celebrate the, its deliciousness? Oh, my God. You got to throw a fit about it? Are we so even a year out from the they're whole trying. issue? They're trying. We're close. We're close. <laughs> they're trying. They, this is some That's hell of an effort trying. on Black History Month. So Papa John's, who, of course, we all recall less than a year ago, the CEO decided to drop the N-bomb during a conference call with his PR firm. The PR firm, uh, I guess, decided to leak that information because they were no longer wanting to be involved after that incident. And it gave us a glimpse as to the um, proclivities, if you will, of the CEO of Papa John's when it comes to race relations in this country. And now in order to come back and embrace them, mm -hmm. to be embraced, I guess, by the black community, Papa John's has decided to now, release the chicken and waffles pizza during Black History I Month. I guess they did some polling and asked you know, people that eat their pizza what they would want. They gave them some options of a new menu item, and this is the one that won. Could it have been trolling by some? Possibly. Uh, very, very possible. Possibly. However, what we know to be true is what our fair or foul is, and it's the simple statement. Papa John's adding a chicken and waffle pizza to their menu. There you have it. I'm not going to sit up here and say I won't eat it. I'm just saying I'm not, I'm not going to eat it in public. I'm not going to eat it around you guys. <laughs> You're not going to have it delivered here? No, no okay. not at all. I'm, in fact, I'm going to probably you know go in disguise and pick it up from a papa john's restaurant because i don't want to deliver it in front of my i can't have papa john's delivered in my hood like people looking at me like i'm crazy <laughs> so again it's a brilliant idea at the same time maybe they should have waited on march 1st just so I they mean, can be completely clean. maybe they should just clean house <clears throat> and just treat people like they should be treated and move on but brie it's about the pizza the menu, that's, that's, <laughs> i bet you can get a two liter of grape soda with it too Oh, man. And y'all know grape soda is just... And that's the thing about a lot... That's the thing about a lot of these stereotypes. Like, I like watermelon. I like fried chicken. These things are They're good. Delicious. They're delicious. delicious. Yeah. But I can't enjoy it as much as I would like because I know there are Chris types that are waiting Excuse in the corner, me? waiting to take an Instagram photo. I see, look at him. I told you. Look, every, look, every, look at him. He's enjoying it. Because we're enjoying it too much? Mm-hmm. Do you like macaroni and cheese? Oh God, do I ever! Okay, so. But again, I try. Opportunity. Look, we talked about about uh, about a few months ago. We were at the Casino Queen, uh. and there was a <laughs> breakfast spread, and there was fruit on the table, and there was, oh, was this amazing. delicious spread of watermelon. Looked incredibly juicy, and be I was excited to partake in the spread because they set us up very nicely over the Casino Queen, but. Gardner and you Chris were just hey, literally in a booth. In just, I need to defend myself here. They were elbowing each other like, look, it's about to happen. That's not what happened <laughs> at all. It's about to happen. And I immediately go, I will just take grapes and cantaloupe. First please. of all, no, 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 no. Now, you didn't. Mm. You were saved by a gentleman by the name of Matt White. He did save me. He, he said, said oh, 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 hey, hey, hey. <laughs> they look it. And I was like, thank you, Matt. Thanks for having my back. I was looking. He was. And I was smiling. I didn't laugh. <laughs> I was smiling. Be smiling. I was smiling at a stereotype directly in front of me. That's why mm. I was. It's like this one time, and I don't feel bad saying this about this couple because they're yeah. Kind of, speak your truth, dude. They're jerks. <laughs> yeah. uh, there, there's a middle-aged couple that used to come into my local watering holes, and both of them were blind, and they were kind of, as I said, they're jerks. So I don't right. mind saying this, but. I lost it laughing one day. I had to leave and go outside because one was going to the bathroom and the other one was kind of guiding them with their arm and they're both blind. And I thought to myself, oh boy, I'm literally looking at the blind leading the blind. And I started smiling and then I felt the laugh coming on. So I took off running out, the, out of the watering hole. So I was laughing at, you know, like that happening in front of me. I was laughing because a stereotype That's fair. was occurring in front of me. I have seen a white lady in an Apple store ask for a manager. So that in itself is hilarious. And, and I didn't want to give Chris 
or Gardner or anyone else in that room at the time the satisfaction. But it's not fair that we can't truly enjoy the things we love in life because of racism. It has ruined delicious food for me. I, I, I kid you not. I do I not. I thought eat. you were, you always say you're a maverick. I, Why ooh. don't you just go for it? Who cares? <laughs> because we're in the because age of cell phones and Instagram and Twitter, and, and I know what to be out in public. You like hell, you see me in a restaurant enjoying some delicious fried chicken, you know the cameras are gonna break out, and I can't have that on my conscience. And that's just gonna be so. Man, can you imagine the memes they probably make in white Twitter when they see a black person out eating fried chicken? I don't want to be. A meme in white Twitter. You want to be famous. But you want to be internet famous. But I don't, don't. want to be that kind of famous. I mean, end up on a Reddit page. That's how you end up like, oh. with other opportunities. No, oh, like, really. I mean, the Negro host eats fried chicken <laughs> at a casino. In reality, Travis, there that. really you is clip no. that off. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so right, yeah, you yeah. can, right? Yeah. yeah. We, we're at the Midco Studios. We can do anything we want. <laughs> Travis, in reality, there's no other famous for you, and that's the way. I mean, there's always there's always time for adult films. And, and, and I don't think people, that's a, that shower a, scene that you shot the other day. It's got a, it's got Make a certain it demographic, uh, <laughs> that certainly enjoy, if you know what I mean. Uh, guys, we're, uh, <laughs> we want to thank everybody for tuning in live on the Facebook stream. And if you're downloading later on after the live stream, thank you as well. Be sure to share and subscribe, rate us if you haven't yet on Facebook. Uh, we are going to check some comments really quick. And if oh, you're, God. If you're listening yes, right now, please bring on more I interesting comments I from the listeners. I can't tell you how much it means to us that when you share this stuff. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I know that uh, your aunt's article saying that uh, Obama was an alien was clogging up your feed, and it's uh, <laughs> really important for you to keep your feed interesting. <laughs> Screw that. Share our damn feed. Share it in your... Spread the joy mm. that is Travis Terrell. Spread the joy that is Bree Weaver. Take Chris Gardner to the mountain. Mm. Share him spread into it. your feeds. We must do all that. All up in it. Could I, do, mm -hmm. could I be like an opening preacher? Could I open up for a, a mega church guy? I think so. Yeah. I'd be like, hey, y'all, what's up with the cross necklaces? How you doing? <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> say, first question, what is the color of your suit? Uh, chair. It, it, it's a made up. First of all, it's a made up color. Okay. Uh, <laughs> cherry plum crush. That would be acceptable in all seventeen states in the South. Yeah. Uh, plot twist. Mm -hmm. I also wear a bolo tie with a cross. Oh. Mm-hmm. What do you think of that? Church ladies would love it. Yeah, that's right. Think. Nobody would pay attention yeah. to my Cadillac that I drive to uh, <laughs> to our giant church every day, right? As, okay, if as we're you struggle to afford your trailer. <laughs> well, as we've talked about previously about doing different types of tri views, people want me to go mudding, jumping out of an airplane, etc. Oh, you will, you will, and I'm fine with that as long as at some point I can get maybe Chris to go to a premiere of a Tyler Perry movie, or maybe even get Gardner to go to a black church. I'm game for here's doing the these things, Here, but no, you have here's to the problem no, 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 no. I've, here's seen, I've been to more black comedy shows than you ever have. That doesn't count, and com black comedy shows are always better, so what's the point? God, so this, is, this is why. After I saw how long <laughs> yeah. Aretha Franklin's funeral was. Damn it. We are short on time. I am not going to a black <laughs> church. That was, and that's honestly. How long? We, we, we've talked about this before. How long is the final Medea movie going to be? It's got to be at least a two part. It's going to be three parts uh, in its own. Yeah, it will be. It's can very you, Can you sing how the uh, end credits will sound? Mm -hmm. That's going to be a sad. Mm -hmm. That's going to actually be a sad day. And you guys are going to miss Medea because. Because it's it's the to see the story come. You're full not the circle. only person of color in the room. Uh, Brie Weaver, oh also of color. Uh, thoughts on Medea? It's not. You have mm -hmm. how many of Medea movies have you like, watched, Brie? Maybe the hey, first two. Garner, Garner, first Garner. two. Light skin, maybe. dark skin. They get. They just start going at it. They're not. They're not what? I don't. Not, I don't feel like I need Fight. to have Fight. closure on those movies. All right, like, I don't need to see. The, I don't even know how many there are. All right. So here's a question. Ten? Your husband. Your husband comes home one day and goes, "I got ten Adam Sandler movies. I got ten Medea movies." Adam Sandler. What? Bree. I'll watch Diary of a Mad Black Woman. That one's good. Because <laughs> you like the fact that, there's the, a life. that the black woman just whoops her husband's All ass. All right. I mean, there's a life lesson in there. Like, <laughs> Whoop your a... husband's ass if he step out on you. All right. Uh, let me say something real quick. We've got uh, some tomfoolery going on. Oh, this comments. should be delightful. On guys. the Facebook live feed. And we also have a text line if you would like to text us. 
remain mostly anonymous. 314-669-1431. You guys ready for this? Okay. Uh, you're going to enjoy this because uh, I sadly agree with the way my, uh, the length of my hair, the, uh, the lighting. Can I get a close-up, Gardner? Uh, we, I am being compared uh, by our friend Steve S J S G E. I don't know what he wants to go by. Uh, he, I'm giving him a Sam Tarly vibe this morning. Oh yes, from uh, from Game of Thrones. From Game of Thrones, <laughs> who will probably be a very intricate character in the final uh, season of Thrones. So that's technically a compliment. And sadly, I already had uh, my face photoshopped into a Sam Tarly. Uh, from my Instagram, because you know what? It's what happens when you pack on a few well, that, pounds. Well, that's, that's okay. You, that's... Everybody thinks they're Jon Snow. Most of us are Sam Tarly in physical features. Well, well they, saying he's not important. Well, they killed the only black character in Game of Thrones in season two, so I don't... Oh, no, no, no. There were, I'll be a White were, Walker, I guess. There, huh? were, uh, there were black slavers like two seasons oh, ago. Jesus. What do you think of that? Mm. They were enslaving others. Mm. What do you think of that? Mm. I was like, damn, out, out of BC's out, man. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody ever watched Oz, the guy from Oz made an appearance on Game of Thrones. Oh, goodness gracious. So, Travis, we've got uh, fair or foul today. Your prize, $10. To Buzz's Hawaiian Grill. You excited about that? I love Buzz Hawaiian Grill. It is so delicious. Buzz's. Damn, I got to figure out these Hawaiian camera angles. Oh, yeah. You, got the, you, you mm. want to close up? You want to talk about Hawaiian. Buzz's for like 10 seconds, Travis? Yeah, why not? Yeah, go ahead. Let's mm. see what we got. Can't make it down to the islands. Looking to get laid. <laughs> we'll head on over to Buzz's Hawaiian Grill. It is delicious. You like food? I do. I'm sure you'll be looking for them when the weather gets warm. Head on down to Buzz's. Bzzz, bzzz. That's all I got. I wasn't bad for it. How many times have you actually eaten it? Twice. I've only eaten it twice. And it's really damn good. This is where you carry the show because we're having a headphone issue if you, uh, if you didn't pick up on that. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you don't let Sam Tully completely run, run the show. Bowl in a china shop, people. Bowl in a china shop. Whoever installed the uh, Velcro on this is getting to talking to. I tried to troubleshoot that, but nobody wanted to listen to me. No, uh, it happens. <laughs> you tried to troubleshoot it. I was like, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. What are we troubleshooting? I like Velcro. the anxiety, the studio. That's exactly basically what was going through all of Bree's head was, uh, nope. You're a man. That is stupid. That's not going to work. Because as men, there's a right way to do it. And then it's our way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And Brie, as always, is trying to do it the right way. And the rest of us goons are trying to do it the men way. And then things fall apart. Things go awry. And Brie's just standing in the corner like a mother. You freaking idiots. I, I told you to do it a particular way. But I let you figure it out. I'm like, it's not going to work. <laughs> but if you would like to go down this path. Go on, <laughs> but you're gonna have to fix it when I go. You're gonna have to figure it out and mess up on your own, and then circle back and fix it. All right, now is that a thing you think you picked up from your mom, or is that something that you know, being in a relationship, being a wife, you just over time you just realize I'm not going to argue or even get into a confrontation. I'm gonna let you just simply do something like an idiot, and right. then we'll just. You'll learn uh, from that I think way. Both. My parents were really good. There's four of us, <laughs> so you have to pick your battles, right? Like you can't, right. like you can't do that. This is gonna, like you can't control everything. So they were really good about. Okay, well, if you do this, this is probably what's gonna happen. But you're old enough, make your own decisions, and we'll be there to help dust you off and laugh at you when this goes wrong. I like that. Like <laughs> you know, move. like we're not gonna. I mean, if it was something where we were gonna get hurt, like if it was serious, right. oh, make, like, makes sense. Absolutely not. But other stuff, it's like okay, well, what do you think was gonna happen? And then you know, and then yeah, of course, when you're married, like you. You learn things, but he's he's really good at uh, he's probably more diligent about the details when setting stuff up to the point of where I'm like, fine, then you just do it because I'll do it wrong and then I'll never hear the end of it. So <laughs> let's let it go. But then sometimes he's like, nope, yeah, you're right. That that was stupid and moving on and then it's fine. But my mom and dad definitely taught me how to smart people <laughs> think smart things people. through. Chris, let's let's try that live read one more time. For who? For Buzz's Hawaiian Grill. I don't. I don't oh. Did I adequately? No, you didn't. Okay, Sarah. that's what I. <laughs> so horrible. Oh my God. Guy spends money with us, and that's what you deliver. Buzz's Hawaiian Grill. When they say aloha, they mean it, and they say it from the heart. A word packed so much significance. Aloha has applications for all facets of life. Can I get a close up? For the love of God. 
<laughs> what? I just want to say, for the love of God, about anything. Uh, all fast life, not just in saying hello and goodbye. Locals know the importance of living. Aloha. That's uh. right. Buzz's Hawaiian Grill signifies that. Aloha means love, kindness, and that you care. And you can tell with their amazing food, masubi, poke made fresh each morning from their own family's recipes. Same recipes they raised their kiki on. That's right. Marinades and sauces are made from scratch because they want their customers to really taste the goodness of Hawaii. They take pride in the vast melting pot that gives Hawaiian dishes their unique flavor. They're driven to share with others their love for the islands, and they hope that you taste the love they put into the work at Buzz's Hawaiian Grill. In their heart, opening up Buzz's is his gift to those who have not traveled to Hawaii. And it, you take a bite of that uh, poke bowl. Mm. Mm. Travis, dead serious. Got a sunny day today. If yeah, you're here in St. Louis. my fingers and if are you ever, crossed. If, you ever, if you're listening and you're coming to visit St. Louis, put it on your list. <laughs> They're always around. They're all around the city, all around, all around the county. Great people, great food. Buzz's Hawaiian Grill, huge thanks to them for supporting us at We Are Live. If you're coming to visit us at our studios also and you happen to look some. up where they're at in the city and you swing by and pick mm-hmm. us up a sample platter, yes. eh, not going to stop you. Not at all. It's <laughs> exciting. You know what else is exciting? Travis is at odds with uh, one of his, mm. I guess you could say, uh, heroes? It is. Uh, this is going to be one of the most difficult episodes we'll ever record in the history of <laughs> We Are Live. On a very special <laughs> We Are Live. This is something Travis that gets um, emotional. truly this hurts my heart and soul. And it took place on, it actually took place on Tuesday and I got word of it yesterday. <laughs> like and someone died. It is, it's, it's a moment that you kind of fear in life. That when your heroes disappoint you. And as you get older you recognize the human in your heroes at the same time it doesn't make it easier to accept and it happened to one of the who am i kidding the greatest president of all time Barack george wh bush saying obama man if you don't don't you ever bring that name up in this damn studio <laughs> but barack obama had an event recently in oakland california with steph curry and they it's a part of his my brother's keeper initiative and uh, he was talking to the audience and well Gardner, I don't, I don't know if you have it, but let President Barack Obama speak for himself. Uh, just, uh, just a minute. Uh, mm. Right this way. Mm. Let's face it. A lot of hip hop and rap music is built around. <laughs> I love the picture. Me picture showing how I got more money than you. I can disrespect you, and you can't do nothing about it. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about you, <laughs> nerd, and punk you. <laughs> ironically that actually shows the vulnerability that you feel I, I mean let, 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 let me say this like if you are really confident about your financial situation mm. you probably are not going to be wearing an eight pound chain around your neck <laughs> because you know oh I yeah. got bank I don't have to show you how much I got mm. I feel good if you are very confident about your sexuality, mm-hmm. you don't have to have eight women around you twerking. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Twerking. This is amazing. Steph <laughs> gets it. I mean, mm-hmm. why, 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 why are you, why, why are you all like, you seem stressed that you got to be Nerd. acting that way. Hmm. Mm. Nobody's forcing those ladies to twerk on you. Mm-mm-mm. Look here. A lot is going on Preach. in America right mm. now. Uh, Vladimir Putin continues to infiltrate. No, 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 no. This isn't to deflection. Avoid this. Nope. Yeah. No, 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 no. Here. Speak. <laughs> Thank you for having the camera on me right away, Gardner, because I, I need to speak oh, this. This is the happiest moment I've had. To President Obama. Have you lost your ever forsaken mind? <laughs> <laughs> who, who do you think you are, uh, sir? Who do you think you are, first of all? I don't need to have anything. I want to have it. If I want eight girls twerking on my crotch, that's what I want. I work my ass off for the opportunity to have women to twerk on me. I pay my damn taxes. Has that ever actually happened to you? Uh, Occasionally, back in high school. You just walked into a dance. That doesn't mean they were (laughs) dancing on you. That was a 
bar in St. Charles that I'm certain I can go to to get eight women to twerk on me. But the in, fact of the in, matter in is... In cahoots is closed, dude. The fact of the matter is, Chris, <laughs> fact church. is... President Obama, you went too far this time, okay? I was here for you, what for the health care, the, the drones. I have done my best to completely bury under everything. Syria? But sure, your Middle Eastern foreign policy wasn't the strongest, and your jump shot, still very questionable. But I defended you. But this, I can't stand by, Bree. I will not stand by. I believe it's okay in America to have any woman you want twerk on you. I believe if you want to go out and buy a gold chain that's eight, nine, ten pounds, you should be allowed to. This is America. People have died for this country to have that very right. And for President Obama to say what I should do with my money, get out of my pockets, Obama. I don't need you there, okay? I work my ass off to have women twerk on me. Gonna sit up her. You seen all the ass? Have you seen the Cardi B money video? Did you see that ass bounce on some gold? You telling me you gonna pass up? You gonna pass up that opportunity <laughs> to 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 see that? Have you ever seen a nice rotund ass shake up and down to the beat of a trap song? Barack Obama, I'm disappointed in you. You've left office and you've changed, man. Then he's gonna finish. So he's it. got his. He's got his. Yeah, now he got he is, you to he have yours. Up, and how you notice that you got two you married men on stage yeah. who've been married with their partner for more than 10 years. And they're going to sit up here and tell me, Travis, you don't need gold chains and fat asses. Who the hell do you think you are to tell a black man he don't need fat asses and gold chains? Y'all yeah. don't say nothing when you got the half naked models on a yacht like Leonardo DiCaprio does when he's in Brazil. I don't hear anybody complaining about that. But let a brother here what, in St. Louis walk Leo down the down. street. Let me walk down Washington Avenue with my chain and my eight hoes. What's wrong with that about? This is what America was built on. And if you don't understand the fundamentals of, of the Americans here in this country who do whatever they can for a better life for themselves and their children, then you will never get it, sir. I hope you never run for president again. You done? Yes, ma'am. I don't think he can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Well, yeah, he, yeah, he can't now. He can't now. I think it needed to be said. I mean, he's not telling you to not do it because you can't. He's just saying... If you have goals and out, like, and you have these opportunities in your life, maybe don't be he's, that person. Oh, he's 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 telling you to pull your pants up. And yeah, yeah he's a little bit of Bill Cosby on you. That was some Bill Cosby s rhetoric in there. He's just and basically. God, and God forbid somebody it. wants you to work harder and, and focus on good. He things. He was making right. an observation though of what you, what kind of mindset you're right, in to do a that. Right, psychological. Like, if you're doing this, this is probably where you are in your mind. Let's get away from that. The comments before that. I sat in here and watched this mm. part of this YouTube <laughs> yes, video. You did, which I'm very proud of you, by the way. Now, you know what he said beforehand, too. He was talking about a culture of masculinity that embraces a dominance to it instead of lifting yeah, up and is. supporting others. Toxic very true. masculinity very is true. what that is. So he was, he was talking about some of that. And his words, were they wrong? Were they wrong? No. Not at all. I don't know if they were applicable, but wow. if they were what applicable, oh, I'm, I'm going to duck out of here for a second and get my notebook so I can write that one down. I'll be back. Isn't applicable how uh, yeah. your folks say it? Like uh, I'm talking Huffington Post being your folks. Mm. Is applicable? Is it like how does like is there a is there a preferred uh, super liberal way of pronouncing uh, applicable or applicable? It doesn't matter. I feel like applicable <laughs> would be more there. Applicable is kind of the snooty, snotty way of doing it. Oh, I mean, uh, that's like somebody like uh, essentially crucifying you if you say Iran wrong. <laughs> Iran. Well, yeah. <laughs> is that how you say it? How do you say it? Iran. No, you don't. You would say Iran. Iran. Oh. But I get what Obama was attempting to get at. At the same time, I think it is old hat to come back to the gold chain ass shaking narrative. I think yes. No, I don't think that should be at the Travis, forefront. Spend your money on that first. I don't. No, no, no. And no, no, that's no. fine. No. He's <laughs> right. You're right. I don't think that should be the first thing you do first. when you roll out your check, right. and the first thing you go do is buy a gold chain that's ten pounds and try to throw your money up at the he, strip club. I get exactly that, but I do doing. believe. I do believe it is okay for you to spend those kind of things on yourself because yeah. I think oftentimes you'll see it in some of these memes and narratives that you will see a picture of Bill Gates or old pictures of Steve Jobs. And he's like, not a Gucci belt in sight, not a gold chain in sight, yeah. but those guys will have $55 million yachts. 
Mm-hmm. You know, those guys will have islands. Like those guys buy extravagant, yeah. very wealthy things, and no one seems to chastise them when they go out and buy these. Because they also live in a billion dollar home. That's fine, but they're they also don't still spending live their money. In a ha- Real quick. House with four of their bros in a. But ain't nothing wrong with a little. <laughs> no, ain't nothing wrong with a little blank blank. That's what Lil Weezy no, said. Got a little blank blank from time to time. It, I do have also- a. I do have a theory on this though too. Okay. Especially on the twerking, because <laughs> if you Google Obama twerking, like like I did yesterday to oh try boy. and find this video. Yeah. There's like a 2016 story, and this is kind of applicable to some of the stuff going on with his children right now. Like, right. how should I've you? I've been trying to make this point for the last five minutes. How should you cover? The child, the children right. of a public figure. How much privacy do they get? We see with one of them. It, was it? Uh, I believe Malia. Malia mm-hmm. with Rose or something. She like was that. out with some Rose. Underage, but almost twenty-one. Right. Okay. Whatever. Um, but from 2016, there's videos out there of someone videoed her and they put it online twerking. Right. So maybe he's taken exception that's, to that's twerking. All the, that's all this. So is, Obama though. hates twerking because it got his daughter. Mm-hmm. On the internet, but my yep. that's part. That's maybe a little possibly working theory. It's possible, but I would no, imagine that's the that entire it's, reasoning. That's the entire. But reasoning. I would imagine at some point in college when Barack met Michelle, that maybe mm-hmm. they were at a dance party and Michelle. I would imagine let that South Side out, and she was shaking them hips and shaking that ass. And that's I would imagine the president. Like I'm just saying <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with a woman shaking that ass if she wants no. to. And I think it's okay for me to bring appreciate that, that. Bring that Soul Train and park it in my station. I, 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 you know that's how it went. <laughs> back to your point where you're. It, there is nothing wrong buying yourself something nice. Right. Do something for yourself. I think the problem is whenever you feel like you have to do it to show other people that you're better than Which them. Is it's fair, the mentality right. behind it, right? It's right. not. Like, I'm the first one that says, treat yourself like you worked hard, go get something nice. But it shouldn't be because your neighbors and everybody that you're around all the time right. has the same thing, like keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah, then true. you're just like, an asshole. Right, <laughs> then you're just a jerk. And really, you can apply it to, uh, it's advice for women, Travis. Okay. Girls don't, they don't care how big your chain is. Oh, I was going to say careful. Usually, <laughs> Figure that's what? an overcompensation for something. Sure, and the I flashiness agree. and whatever. I mean, there are girls that are into that, and that's fine. There's right. nothing wrong with it. But Show's turning if into you, Oprah. <laughs> if you just be a little more humble, right? And, Kendrick Lamar told me that. Yeah, if you just reel it in a little bit, you're gonna catch the type of person you're gonna want to spend your life with, and then you will end up being married like Barack and Steph Curry, and be in these relationships that you're so angry at because that's they're giving you advice. True. But look where they're at. That's very true. <laughs> from the uh, from the Facebook comments, uh, our friend A Train reminding Travis, "You ain't a rapper, though, bro." <laughs> <laughs> <That is>? yeah. <laughs> no, I am. Oh. Not. I am not a rapper. Oh, so but I, I think yes, and Bree, you're exactly right. But I I also like the celebration of our of culture. Oh, I think yeah. that's fine, and I think. And I think it is a little bit of a cultural gap in this conversation because, again, I, I look at country music artists. They spend money on extravagant things, and, uh, too. I'll tell you what they spend But there is a narrative on. about country music artists. They spend, oh, yeah, there are. They spend money on a lot of... They're big trucks. Yeah, Diesel. things like oh. that. So It's right in the song. Yeah. And so is the rap in the rap right. lyrics. It's right in the song, too. <laughs> so but you're, so I'm you're, saying the, cri- the, the criticism is, isn't... They the, don't. The energy isn't matched. Uh, when no, no, country no, no. music stars go out and buy an F one fifty, and they put a. It's a horrible argument. Whatever you guys, what you guys put up. You put like a you're platinum saying muffler it. on the back. I don't know what you do. <laughs> Travis, Travis, you're saying it like uh, George W. Bush said this. The blackest president of all time. Yeah. Your guy said right. this. You can't use that argument. No, I am using that because I think Barack <laughs> Obama, and I'm using this argument because because it's all you got. Well, no, because I think this is the white side of Barack that's coming out. Oh, yeah, I went there. Yep. This is there it, this is. is the Barack Obama that was Harvard Law. This Just is Barack. You, know you didn't like you didn't like is, what he said, so now you got to call it the white side of him. Bree, I don't uh, like this part where I you call me out and you're I, honest about. <laughs> But I will say, but I do think there are older blacks that are a part of this respectability politics in that generation. Like even my stepfather, mother, they're of the belief that, yes, you better pull your pants up or, you know, you better have a 3.2 GPA or the cops are going (laughs) to shoot you in the back. 
Like these are things. <laughs> welcome, that, uh, welcome, welcome to the madness that is Travis. <laughs> Where are you going with this? Oh, we're, we're hitting our stride. Yeah. Finally. This is well, if you're new to the show. First of all, hit share on the Facebook live stream. Second of all, welcome to the world of Travis Terrell. What is happening? <laughs> Listen here, man. Sometimes I go sit up here. Oh my God, Travis, wear a collar shirt, or you're never going to get up to collar. <laughs> like, shut up. Let me wear what I want to wear. I'm not worried about what anyone else thinks of me. If I'm comfortable in my skin, Obviously. I'm going to wear my eight pound chain. If I'm comfortable <laughs> in my skin, I'm going to go to the strip club and have eight women tw twerk on my ass. I think you can do that. No one yeah. says that. What do you think these hedge fund <laughs> managers are doing? What do you think they're doing? You're doing a, you're doing a lot of what ifs. Well, yeah, what, what are about? hedge fund managers spending their money on? They're just spending on a community project. Hedge these, fund managers can be black, I'm pretty sure. I'm sure, but the vast majority of them are not. But are so you, you saying black people? Wait, 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 he's saying black people aren't capable of being no, hedge fund No, I'm saying black people aren't given the opportunities <laughs> to be able to become hedge fund managers. Because they're wearing gold chains. But you're acting like we would say, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <hell." laughs> <laughs> not going to let that slip through the cracks. But you're acting oh. like we would say, oh, yeah, that's fine, that's cool. That guy is still an asshole like the other guy. <laughs> They're all. They well, all are. Fair. But the fact of the matter is, Barack, I was fine for you coming for my health care. I don't want <clears> you to <throat> come for my twerkins. Are you? When was the last time you went on a date? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Buying your nice things, not worried about the twerking up in the club. Just asking. Last time you were on a date. I, you know, it may have been. Uh, oh, so are you are you shedding light on the frustration point? Uh huh. Was, ah, that's good. I like I was, what I'm watching Bree work over mm -hmm. here. I, I think that I was last time I was on a date. Eric Grimes was still the governor of Missouri, so it's been some months. Mm -hmm. So it, is so there frustration in there? Maybe. Oh, maybe he's interviewing himself. Bit. He's interviewing himself. Yeah. Is there some frustration because I haven't had the warm touch of a woman in months? Possibly. Do I miss? Having intimate relations with a woman, maybe. Am I frustrated, stressed out because uh, my balls are dry? Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, mm -hmm. Fact of the matter is, it's still, I like to twerk or I like to see people twerk. <laughs> I, do, I don't <laughs> twerk myself. Oh. If push came to shove, would I twerk? Sure. Do I have student loan bills? And if someone paid me a lot of money in order to twerk, mm -hmm. I would strongly consider it. Another could be another pain point. He, mm -hmm. he sees that as an elimination of a potential source of income. Right. I just, Damn. just gonna, oh, I to, anti ass shaking. The first black president is anti ass shaking. He's not. I, I can't no, believe he's he not though. Don't, he's not. Though. I don't. This is weird. This There's is crazy. There's a hierarchy of needs and what you should probably spend your money on if you want to get to a certain point in your life. And giant gold chains and thousand dollars nights at the strip club aren't really what you should do until you have the money to do it he's man he's probably right it's good funny probably advice. probably right but i tell you what jussie smollett probably is whatever you know joe biden would never say that thank you thank you i made that clear stand up <laughs> but you, you you did bring up a very oh, god love you gosh <laughs> Can we can we well, show we're that all video? standing up for you right now. Can we show that video sometime on here with you, when you have Eventually, eight days notice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 did you see the fear and anger <laughs> injected into his face as I Gardner mentioned a, a potential video ad to the show today? He goes, <laughs> "We'll see it in March." <laughs> <laughs> you got that uh, possum in the headlights look. <laughs> did the possum the headlights? I'm glad you brought it up though, Chris. Uh, it's. It's like our when we were on radio a year ago, every headline was Trump, and we did our best to avoid it, but we couldn't because every headline was Trump. Has that well, changed? now it not oh, necessarily, <laughs> but we've done a very good job, I think, as a show avoiding him. Oh, but yeah. there's one story that just continues to rear its ugly head, unfortunately, in the news that we have brought up every show this week, and that is what Chris just missed and Jesse Smollett, who of course was. Uh, if you haven't heard, I, I'm now conflicted actually, and you you set it up. Set no, it up. yeah, Jesse Smollett yeah. was arrested for allegedly filing a false police report. The Empire actor surrendered to authorities after being charged with disorderly conduct. Actor Jesse Smollett uh, was arrested. He actually turned himself in, I believe, early this morning. Uh, police issued the felony charge uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, he handed himself in to Cook County Criminal Court. Uh, he, of course, as we all know. Uh, filed the report about, I guess now, a month, is it less than a month ago, about him being assaulted this is by Ma two MAGA men country. wearing MAGA hats, uh, yelling news. racial and homophobic slurs, and he said they threw a noose around his neck. Jesse said he was heading to uh, Subway 
at 1 a.m. in he the back. hard winter of Chicago. He fought back. And he said he fought back, and he said, you know what? They may have got me, but I got them too. And he said, he sandwich. He, and he apparently kept the sandwich. Well, I wonder, I'll die for a pizza sub, folks. I, I don't blame him. That meatball mm-hmm. subs ain't bad at all. When's the last time either of you had uh, that sandwich company? Subway. Uh, it's been at least two years. Probably about half a year. I think they were invented solely to like stick into junior college campuses. <laughs> and like high school. Next yeah, to high school, it's got to be. Sure. Yeah. Well, the reason why Chris is conflicted because Mr. Smollett has oh, added. This is like a bomb. He has added in my lap. a big time defense attorney to his lawyer team. <sighs> A gentleman coming off a victory against the NFL with Colin Kaepernick. What is this attorney's name? I, I tried to look him up well, he's on the a certain podcast. Of, he's the co-host of uh, Reasonable Doubt. Uh, with Adam is, Carolla. Who is that uh, co-host? Boy, What's his oh, name boy. again, Chris? Mark Garagas. Mark Garagas, who, of course, <laughs> has now been the attorney. Listen to this. He's been the attorney for, wasn't he Winona Ryder's attorney? Chris Brown. Chris Brown. Scott, Colin Kaepernick. Scott Peterson. Scott Peterson. <laughs> he's and, the best. He's and the now... Best. <laughs> The second and, Jesse's, I, and what and what did you say, Chris? When you found out that Mark Garagos was a part of his team, what were the words that came out well, of your usually mind? Usually, I I like to side with like oh, I love how Garagos is all about justice. He's right. fairly like I'm sure I guarantee you he's never voted more like presidentially. He would probably always vote Democrat. Yeah, he's Armenian that. and he's super active in that community. He's always calling out. Uh, uh, as it would be Turkey, I guess, or other countries for the uh, Human Ar- Armenian, Armenian genocide mm-hmm. and, and all that. So I, I like him, and he's also very straightforward. He's not somebody who's uh, screaming stupid, uh, what I would say, uh, virtue signaling, sure. stuff like that. Um, and usually I'm like, yeah, you know, maybe Scott Peterson, maybe we should look into this more. Immediately I saw this Jesse guy uh, signed up with him. I go, oh, he's guilty, damn it, and he's going to get out of it. <laughs> Immediately, immediately, my principal. I was sitting, immediately. I was sitting in like, here in the studio yeah, yesterday. You guys were kind of in the <laughs> open area. I overheard Travis talking about the story, and then he mentioned, "Oh, did you see who he signed on as attorney?" Oh, and there was a pause, <laughs> and I heard you guys say the name Mark Garrigus, and I heard Chris go, "God damn it!" <laughs> <laughs> And I, I'm in here, and I just start losing it laughing. Uh, he, he's so I like, great. I was like, here's a story that was so, like, Travis was like, I'm waiting for all the facts. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like, oh, we're just going to dump on Travis for this. And then oh, man. it brought Chris back and humbled Chris a little bit by having Garrigus <laughs> involved. And I'm like, this is, this is, I don't know how other people feel about it, but for these two, this is a perfect synergy in a way for this story. <laughs> it, there's a lot going on. If you listen to their podcast, it's so good. And they don't agree. But he's just, he's great. He's smart. And he's very interesting. And, and the guy I wins. Try and the separa- guy he wins. Does. He does. And I try and separate. He's great at his job. Oh, he's job. unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. And I try and separate it because I know I'm always like, he's got me thinking maybe Scott Peterson needs to get out. Like, I need to step away for a second. That's how good this guy is. But at the same time, he, yeah, he's, yeah, he's. This is this the, has me very confused. This situation, the, this like I don't need Jesse Smollett in uh, prison. By the way, I get right. it. He, uh, manpower was used. This is a bad, dumb, stupid thing that Agreed. should never happen. I want to be free to make fun of him. Right. I don't necessarily need a pound. I of agree flesh with you there, Chris. I don't. I don't. I, I know the I mean, punishment comes. Two Nigerian shame, brothers for sure, and he will like, be. This is, oh, he already like, has he been. Has he been. already yeah. has been. Like, yeah, like he's gonna get dragged through the mud that way. But he doesn't need to go to. I mean, false. It is incredibly like, it, irresponsible. It's a felony, I not, get it. Right. Yeah. And I'm not trying to downgrade right. that either. Right. No, but just like, I mean, you see, oh, man, Mark, what's up, man? Why you got to do this? <laughs> and Chris Brown about to get in trouble again. <laughs> Drop right. him, man. Don't. God, come on. But to your point, uh, it is, I don't need, I think the penalty comes with one to three years and significant fines. Look, give him the significant fines. Uh, again, to Bree's point, he's going to be publicly shamed, unfortunately, for the rest of he his life. Not unfortunately. Again. I'm fine with him being made fun. I am, too. I, it, I, think it, I think the reason, and I, I'll acknowledge, the reason why I'm soft on it is because you think he's I be- hate the fact that someone hijacked real issues that hurt millions of Americans every day, whether you're like dude gay, screaming MAGA and throwing nooses black. at you? Well, I think, here's the thing is, I think racism <laughs> obviously he, still he made exists. It a, he made it a cartoon character thing. He turned, yeah, he didn't need to. It, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there are people who we know who maybe support this president who do not like blacks, do not like gays. That was already understood. So for him to go to this length to make that point wasn't necessary because we saw what happened in Charlottesville. 
You know what I'm saying? So we've seen incidents around the country that makes the point that there are a lot of very openly racist people who do indeed walk around in MAGA hats. There was no need for you to come up with this story to emphasize that point. So that's why I was very soft to him because I'm trying to understand the logic behind you should be making up this story. And I am upset. And I, I am allowed to tell you how to feel. I'm, oh, well, this is <laughs> That was going to be your next question. My <laughs> thought was like, why do you need to give people more ideas? Uh, first of all, you find you find somebody here, that watches this and they're like, "Oh, that didn't happen. That was actually a really good idea." And then they go off and do it. Yeah, then people I'm had this. tiki torches for Christ's sake. Like they're gonna. I mean, it's because they were nerds and couldn't make their own real torches. Right, but it's like you don't yeah, need to a, like create this right, story. Right, there was no need for it. And give anybody else any more ideas because that stuff, and, and that stuff did happen back right, in the day. It really right. did happen. So and, it's super messed up. And it's and, and he did. And if it is found true that he indeed came up with this <laughs> oh, entire come, look, we have, you we have, come we on, man. Do process in this country. And he's a, please, please clip this and, and hold it because I'm going to need you to apply that to everything that comes up now. Thank but you. the fact of the matter is... Chris Denman, 2020. <laughs> Damn it, he's running against me. Uh, but the fact of the matter is... I'm it going is, on Rogan. It is very disappointing because, again, what's going to happen, and even if it's wrong, there are going to be those who are like, told you, told, look, told you, that all this stuff has been made up, well, and I mean, this, this is an right. example. Yeah. And they're going to be wrong, and they're going to be idiots to say that, yeah. but the fact that now you've given them that platform when you mm -hmm. didn't need to, mm -mm. it's the frustrating thing about it. And me and Gardner kind of joked about this Offset yesterday, man. Are there two oh, communities? Offset. Are there two communities you certainly don't want to piss off than the gay community and the black community? Two I of the said most that vocal, on the show two days most ago. Most vocal communities in America, and you just found a way to completely alienate them. So not only will he not be able to recover from this in regards uh, to his recover. career, it's going to be far, hard for him to get any credibility amongst two of the most vocal communities in America. So this guy just shot himself in the foot twice, and I don't understand the reasoning why. And we may never understand. Right. We may never, yeah. never understand his inside thinking as to why he decided to come up with all of this. Mm -hmm. Because I, I did see a tweet yesterday, I think I believe of Joy Reid from MSNBC, and he, she said just that. It was, I don't think we're going to be satisfied with whatever reason it is for why well, he made might... all of this up. Because at the end of the day, a lot of people are going to be hurt by this, and that's all that there's matters, the people that are going to be hurt by this. There's not a good enough reason. True. There really isn't. Oh, and like, we all know what it was. Like he, it was an attention process. thing. Well, that, yeah. right. But that, but no matter what the reason is, it's never, I, right. to me, it's not going to be good enough. It, and then it could really just be his thought process and he could have just been losing it for whatever here, reason. Here's, like, just not. Right now, 10, 10 things within a mile of here happen that are worse than what this Way guy did. Way worse. Just now. I guarantee you did. I still just want to be able to make fun of him. And I will continue to make fun of him, but yeah. again, I don't need him locked up. And also, on top of that, you're looking at something. Um, I disagree. If he has a good team and gets his ass humbled and uh, gets out and kind of shows how and, – and lives in it, admits how stupid it was, he can work again. Robert Downey Jr. was unemployable for 10 years, guys. Don't forget that. This it'll, guy will work. Right. This it'll is different. Is he good? Is he good? Though. By the way, is I, he like? Is he? I, I, I'm, I'm, he's better than me. So I guess right. I mean right. a, a major it's network. The T, like, it's the To thing. Well, it's like you'll yeah. put up with To until he's too old. I used to think like I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I think with Robert Downey Jr., he was facing his own internal demons. In this situation, he threw a lot of people under the bus. Mm -hmm. Like he threw two big communities True. under the bus, and that's going to be very difficult. And Especially in Hollywood, a lot of executives in Hollywood are homosexual. Uh, they pull a lot of the strings. So for you to alienate them, that's going to be very difficult to come back from. I'm not saying that he won't be able to work again, but he's going to he's gonna need to go away for a while. And right, I know like there's talk of Fox suspending him, but he's going to probably have to go away for a while in order for him to come back from this. And hell, maybe... He'll work out some type of deal where he can save some type of face with the Chicago Police Department. But this is going to be tough to come back from. I don't I don't know. This is unfortunate because we all know of real incidents that take place every day. And for a guy, for whatever to reason, fake it, to fake it just it seems so. Uh, and you're a, you're a successful actor, successful singer on a one of the most popular That's shows it. on network like, television. Like so what career, was the motivation? That was I don't understand right. it. Like his career is really close, I think, to just exploding. Right. Right. That it, show is really popular. Like one of the most then, popular shows, yeah. higher rated shows on TV. Mm -hmm. So I, again, to Chris's point, he said attention. You're on a major TV show. What more attention do you want, man? Narcissism's mm -hmm. a hell of a thing. It is. Though. You're right, Bree. It You're gets us right. all. Uh, Chris Denman, Bree Weaver, Travis Strell here. Chris Gardner 
is uh, manning the uh, tech booth. Again, if you throw an idea at him that he doesn't know about beforehand, mm -hmm. he's a possum scared on a porch <laughs> and the lights have been turned on. Uh, next segment. So we do two segments in this live stream. Uh, and I need you guys to share this. we got a really cool interview coming up. The man, is na his name is Jim Brewer. You know him from Saturday Night Live. He was in, what was it, Travis? Half big. Half big <laughs> to Dave Chappelle. He's done a million I need a backyard of me. He's oh, done a million <laughs> different things. One-on-one, uh, -on -one, myself, Jim Brewer. He's on tour with Metallica right now. He's at Helium Comedy Club all weekend long. You'll hear more about that. Next hour, we've got the man, the myth, the legend, Jeff Jones returning Woo! to the show. He is from Scoops with DannyMac.com. That's Dan McLaughlin. Works for a little team called the St. Louis Cardinals. Pretty and now deal. Jeff is his uh, immediate... Want to call him uh, intern proxy? Oh, his little brother. His little brother. His little step bro <laughs> stepson. His, his little, yeah, yeah. He's a stepson. He's like Ugh, adopted I've got child. Jeff with me, guys. I, no <laughs> poker tonight. I can already tell I'm going to be jealous because he's got son. You can see he's had son on his. Face. So Lucky stay son tuned <laughs> for uh, for Jeff Jones. Now we're going to throw it to the great Jim Brewer one on one with the great Chris Denman. What's up, everybody? It's Chris Denman one on one with Helium Comedy Club's headliner this weekend. Returning to the show, last time he was in town, had a great interview, face-to-face, -face. happy to have Jim Brewer on the line. What's up, Jim? How are you, man? All good, getting ready to uh, swing out your way. Bring a parka, dude. It's going to be rough, man. It's going to be cold. Really? I'm done with the winter. It's over, man. Are you paying attention to baseball off season at all? That's, that's oh, like my nonstop. Warm. That's all I do. All I do, every day I wake up and it's MLB and... And my net. Like, what what happened? I just saw Machado now, finally side. If you're Manny Machado, and and I, I was excited to talk to you because I was like, oh, I haven't been talking much baseball lately. I've just kind of been paying attention. And uh, the Paul Goldsmith thing was cool for St. Louis. But if you're Huge. Machado, that, like the San Diego, you've, you've done uh, probably the comedy store down there or a million different venues there in your time in stand-up. But how great is it to know that you're in Sandy freaking Ego for 10 years making that kind of money, and you're the top dog in town. No more Chargers, nothing. Man, it's Man Diego now. That, oh, I let, he's right. That's exactly what it is. Man Came Diego. up with that on the fly. <laughs> I like that. I think, <laughs> I think you better uh, copyright that as soon as possible for those shirts they got. Absolutely. you got to get online. <laughs> While we're doing this right now, get online right now. And right. Man Diego. Um, I think that's our next... Do you want to open a bar in uh, San Diego? Like we'll call it Man Diego. Okay. Yes, let's do that. What are we waiting for? <laughs> Dude, uh, I'll say this. Is the baseball stuff's cool, everything, but I do actually want to jump into the Jim Brewer podcast. Also, you've been on tour. Who have you been on tour with recently, man? This is absolutely insane. Yeah, Metallica. Metallica. Matter of fact, <laughs> matter of fact as soon as I leave uh, St. Louis, that I'm jumping on the last leg of their American tour. Is that that's, I mean, obviously this is a childhood or adult dream come true, but can you walk me through either the business dealings and how that happens or what it's like? I mean, you know, at this yeah. point in your career, movies, SNL, you've done a million cool tours, you do a very unique brand of comedy, you can kind of do whatever you want from an entertainment standpoint. At that level, is that just strictly your agent's a badass and knows what you like? Do you send a tweet that's like, Headfield, let's go. Like, what do you do? Here's here's what happened. Headfield reached out to me about a year ago Personally? today. Personally? Yes. yes. He's like, dude, are you watching Billions? I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, would you be interested in doing some type of uh, opening for the show? We're going on tour. Is this a text from James Hetfield? How does this yes. happen? Yeah, text. And I went, okay. are you talking I want all about, the I think you're talking yes. about stand-up? And he went, no. And then it was like, I was like, well, write an email what ideas you're talking about. So mm -hmm. they had ideas um, that were, you know, maybe a parking lot guy guy that roams around in a character uh, shooting shirt cannons it was it, it, they wanted it to be like a almost like a party if that makes sense right that's so, cool and when you're Metallica you can probably afford Jim Brewer's party antics yes so 
that then led to us still trying to figure now I didn't hear I sent him I sent him ideas and I didn't hear back from him in months. And so all of a sudden around May, um, in May I get um, a call from his manager and, and he said, hey, can I come to your house and talk to you about this thing James has been talking about? <laughs> going, oh, oh, okay. So oh, all right. it was a Sunday and I had all my ideas ready to go and I was going to pitch him all my stuff and I was like, I'm, I'm definitely going to, all right. I, I got all these ideas, and I think I like them. And he came in. He had a laptop, walked to my kitchen. Uh, he opened up the laptop, showed me all the tour dates. He said, you're going to have to talk to your wife. Uh, there's a lot of dates here. We go in September. We end in March. Are you into this? I went, <laughs> yeah. And he went, good. We announce it tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be oh, Howard Stern, Rolling Stone, and we got your name in it. Uh, like, what? Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. He said, um, he goes, um, I don't know what kind of money you need, but, you know, we'll let, we'll let everyone else figure that out. And then the show, nah, we'll figure it out. And then the next day, the next day, it's, it's nationwide, and people go, dude, you're, you're opening? I went, I I don't know what I'm doing. So, I don't know what I'm doing yet. Are you, right. are you, doing, are you singing? No. Are, are you doing, you're doing a, like you're doing a whole hour so I don't know what I'm doing. It says you're torn with him. I know I'm torn with him. I know that. Um, so then, I kind of, I flew out to meet with Lars. When I met him one-on-one, -on -one, he says, look, Every time we have bands, it's a bummer. No one comes to see the bands. So it's a bummer for them. It's a bummer for us. Goes, so we want to do something that is a crowd, a fan experience. Because you're, you're a big Metallica fan. You know right. what we do. You know the art. You've been doing it so long. We trust that you can create something. And just this is the most important thing. You don't have to be funny. Don't don't stress on trying to be funny. Uh, um, like Lars, that's impossible. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> you know, tell stories. You want to make video, whatever you want to do. Bring a DJ. Bring somebody. I went okay. Let me. Uh, <laughs> that actually helped me, and that's what I basically created. So I go out there. I get a DJ. He starts to show up. We play nothing but most of the songs are songs I pick because I mm -hmm. know the audience. Van Halen, Iron Maid, Judas Priest, ACDC, uh, Scorpions, just stick along that line. Um, I go up, do about half hour to 40 minutes of stories, crowd interaction. Sometimes I go in the crowd, poke fun at certain people, uh, interview people as they're walking in, and it's all live in front of the whole audience with a camera. Then I go backstage with the camera, do a whole backstage live, looking for the band, we do game shows. We do uh, metal sing-alongs. It's uh, trivia. It's turned into a really, really awesome thing, and uh, it really sets the tone for the night. Jim Brewer is going to be at Helium this weekend, the 22nd through the 24th, 7 7.30 and 10 o'clock showtime. Just want to remind everybody, this will be packed. This will be a hell of a show. Yeah. So you're not supposed to be able to take – uh, more leeway when you're a stand-up comic because you've already hit the jackpot in the most amazing job in the world, right? Like you get to choose. Right. Yeah, you, you got to work. You know, I get it. You got to be away from your family and stuff. But basically, you're at a point where you choose. You can pick the times, whatever. Yep. You're probably gonna have a warm crowd wherever you go because yep. of your uh, your reputation, precluding yourself. How in God's name did you get to a point where you got to amend even those rules? that you literally get paid, I'm sure, a very handsome amount to be on tour with somebody in a band that you love. And now you've even taken that a step further where you don't even have rules for your stand-up set or anything. It's literally, from what you just described, it's the Jim Brewer hour. It's whatever you want to do. Yeah. How does that yeah. happen? It just happened. I don't even know. <laughs> I've been uh, 
I feel like I'm the Forrest Gump of entertainment. I love that. Things I, I will share like this. A box of chocolates. <laughs> I want to say that you're better than I. The only uh, former member of Metallica I've personally dealt with is, uh, and I. So we had you in the studio last time you were here. I don't think I told you this, but it's a funny story regardless. Dave Mustaine comes through. I'm like 21 years old, helping out a buddy who's a concert promoter, and I don't know. I'm like six foot three, 220 pounds at the time. Dave is not a large dude, and uh, I apparently I'm working the uh, working is a like pick him up from the airport. You know how that stuff goes for college yeah. kids at shows and things. And I'm standing there, and uh, we had had nice conversation all day. You know, getting him the water with uh, at room temperature. Basically, his, uh, his bitch for the day, kind of. But he was real nice and everything. I made the sure. mistake of not realizing that he had a uh, second encore uh, coming up. And I, I got to take a nice split guitar to the ribs as, uh, <laughs> as Dave must really? be. Smoked me with his guitar. And then uh, when he realized it was me, kind of gave me the, uh, oh, shoot, sorry, Chris. But, yeah, I can say uh, that uh, Dave Mustaine's pegged, uh, pegged my ribs with a uh, sports guitar before. <laughs> so I thought you'd appreciate that. <laughs> I do appreciate that. You Many do. people Jim, would die to have Jeff in there. I was going to say, I feel like the way people react to his guitar picks or even the guys in Metallica's guitar picks, that's definitely worth sharing. I can sleep a lot better with that story. I will tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Uh, it's been great catching up with you, man. We're excited to have you back in St. Louis. Again, you can get tickets at uh, Helium Comedy Club here in St. Louis's website, 7.30, 10 o'clock shows, and then a 7 o'clock show Sunday. Jim, we're excited to have you back. Super pumped about Thanks. it. Congrats on all the success, my friend. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Take care, buddy. That's right. That was Jim Brewer. You can catch him at Helium Comedy Club this weekend. Uh, Bree and I are here. Bree, you having fun with the new setup, the new studios, everything that we're getting to do? Yeah, it's great. It is. We've got comedy tonight at Southtown Pub. Impolite Company taking over the comedy show in South City's finest establishment. Stop by. Doors at 7. Show at 8. Chris Sear, Marquise Moore. And the great Scott James headlining tonight. Guys, you can text in, call in 314-669-1431. Hold off on the calls for now. We're going to get that worked out for next week. I'm going to tell you about one more sponsor, Tech Electronics. They helped us put together this beautiful studio. They provide systems and services that help their customers work smarter, feel safer, and collaborate more effectively. Use Tech Electronics for your business. Check out the capabilities at Tech Electronics. Dot com. My name is Chris Denman. That's Bree Weaver. Travis Trail will be back on the other side with Jeff Jones from Scoops with DannyMac.com.